Are you migrating to cloud? What should you migrate first? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to Cloud Migration 101, where we share migration tips and tricks. I'm Priyanka. And I'm Kyle. And in this episode, we'll walk you through the process of choosing the first application to migrate to Google Cloud. Let's say today I'm the head of engineering at Cloudy Corp. We make automated floodgates for water mills. As you can imagine, our infrastructure is complicated with a large number of applications, and I'm not sure which application to move first. Well, let me help demystify this process. Let's start by seeing all of your apps and what they are. Yes, so here are all our apps. Ah, the first thing to do is to group your applications into categories. All my single tier applications, multi tier applications, databases, and dev tools are grouped together now. Awesome. Now we find one common example in each category, something that does a good job of representing the entire category. For this, we will have to drill deeper into what makes an app a good candidate for being the first to migrate. Exactly. And there's a list of criteria that I generally recommend. All right, let's go through this list then. A good first application to migrate should be something that's typical of your existing workloads, but nothing that's business critical. We want to use this application to build a knowledge base within our organization around how to migrate applications to the cloud. For this reason, we should not pick an app that is extremely business critical, but we should also not pick an app that is used, say, a few times a year. Try to find a balance of moderately business critical applications so it helps increase the momentum of the migration. Now, the second criteria is that we want an application that's managed by a central team so it has support and ideally has an application owner who embraces innovation. Picking a high-performance team that sits in the main office with a proven history of implementing modern dev practices, DevOps, and SRE can be a good candidate. If these apps have leadership sponsors and clear goals, that would be perfect. Now, the third criteria is that we want to try and find something that's relatively standalone with a low number of network security and application dependencies, and also doesn't need any code refactoring to move to the cloud. Stateless apps would be great because they don't require any data migration or an app that only needs configuration changes, but no code changes. Next, the data storage requirements should be relatively small. If your application has petabytes of storage, you probably shouldn't use that as a first mover. This is mainly because we don't want to start off with an edge case by picking an app that is not representative of the most of the other apps. The application should also not be subjected to any complicated compliance or licensing challenges. Make sure the licensing terms are clear. Check if the license allows you to run the app in the cloud or not. You may also have specific compliance requirements. For example, in some countries, the customer has the right to decide where to store their data. For these reasons, we recommend such apps not be the first ones that you migrate. And last but not least, we want an application that can afford a cutover window. If the application has to stay up 100% of the time, it is not a great candidate for your first mover application. Your teams are going to be learning with the first mover, and we want to be able to provide them a cushion where if they make a mistake, it's not detrimental to your business. Since an application like batch processing can tolerate a longer downtime than the customer-facing apps, it makes sense to pick batch processing service over the e-commerce apps, assuming it meets other criteria we discussed earlier. Exactly. Now let's try and apply this to our applications at Cloudy Corp. So here's our landscape of applications. We already grouped the apps based on categories. Among these apps, what are some of your high performance teams? Well, inventory, payment, SaaS and mobile apps, document database, SQL database, and CI tools are some of our high performance apps. And out of those, which would require refactoring or migration has major dependencies that it would require? SaaS and mobile apps along with SQL database have dependencies and may require refactoring, but others are fairly independent. Okay, what about serious edge cases? SQL database is huge and also won't lead to a ton of learning that can apply to other apps except for maybe another SQL database that is internal. So that could be a later migration. Great. Do any of these have licensing concerns? No, but there are some data compliance things that we need to take care of around users and data in EU for our SaaS application. So we cannot start with that. Okay, and which of these apps can afford a decent cutover window? CI tools and inventory service can afford a cutover window for sure. Payment service and SQL database has to be 100% available all the time, so those will be a no-go for the first phase. Well, with that, you have a list of apps that you want to migrate first. Start with the inventory app, learn from that. Apply it to the mobile app, the CI tool, the SQL database, and do that in sequence. 
Remember, it's really beneficial to start small. Move a very simple application first and learn a bunch about how you're going to run your larger and more complex applications on Google Cloud. And by using this approach, you'll set your business up for a successful migration to Google Cloud. So today, we learned how to decide what to migrate first. We started by grouping our apps into categories and then apply these different categories to make the right choice. If you are in the process of migration, don't forget to like and subscribe because we don't want you to miss any episode of this Cloud Migration 101 series.